Right now, the nano mouse works fairly well. Its sensors do gather some important information from its environment from which it can uh, make decisions. However, it is dependent on the ambient light. So this light bulb here, if it's a bright light bulb, the number it's going to affect those sensor readings. If it's a dim light bulb, they're going to be lower. Uh, and so then the mouse isn't going to behave as um, uh, consistent as we would like, as consistent as we need for it to get through a maze reliably. So to improve the functionality of the mouse, let's review real quick what's going on. Uh, so the mouse gets light rays hitting its detector from ambient light sources, and it also gets light rays hitting its detector when it shines its emitter, it, that light hits a wall, and then it bounces back and hits the detector. Uh, you notice I got a white wall here, that's because I painted the walls of my maze white because it reflects light better than black, which absorbs light. At any rate, uh, we get two light sources hitting this detector, the ambient light and the reflected light. What we want to do is eliminate the ambient light from the equation, and we can do this by flickering the emitter on and off and taking that information and deducing what this reflected light is. So, when the emitter is on, it's actually measuring two things. It's measuring the ambient light and the reflected light. We're going to create a variable to, to record this information. It's going to be called combined. And then when the emitter is off, it's only capturing the ambient light. So if I know the ambient light, and I know the combined light, then I can actually solve for the reflected light. I can say reflected equals combined minus ambient. We're going to employ this trick uh, to isolate the reflected light and then use that as our sensor reading, use that to make decisions. Before we make substantial modifications to our code, let's take a minute to see through the eyes of the nano mouse. Um, here you can see I have a wall in front of the mouse, and you can see I've got some ambient light hitting it as well. The mouse, if we move the wall, the value does drop. And if we move the mouse closer to the wall, the value goes up, and if we move it further away from the wall, the value goes down. These are all things that we desire. There are two things that we don't like, though. The first one is um, the effect of the ambient light on the sensors. You can see that as I point the mouse away, from the ambient light, it does the, it affect the sensor values. The, the right sensor went up and the front detector went down. Uh, the other thing is when that ambient light goes away, it has a big impact on the sensors. So it would be nice to filter out the effect of the ambient light, and that's what we're going to do now. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of a few lines of code that have to do with the left and right sensors just to make this process a little easier to follow. So in this block of code that sets the uh, emitters high, that turns them on, I'm just emitting, uh, deleting the left emitter high and the right emitter high lines. Down inside our view command I'm going to uh, delete the things uh, belonging to the left detector and the right detector. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little ln right at the end of this print statement so that it prints on a new line. Okay. Next, I'm going to create some private variables. A private variable is a variable that can only be accessed from within the class. The first variable I'm going to create is called, uh, it's an integer, and it's going to be the front ambient uh, value. The next one is going to be an integer that is the front combined. And the last one is an integer that is going to be the front reflected. 
I'm going to put a little comment above each of these just to remind you exactly what they do and anybody else who might be uh, looking at your code. This first variable is used to store values, uh, sensor values, so, um, when the emitters are off. The next one is used to store sensor values when the emitters are on. And the last one is used to filter out ambient light. Okay, the next thing we need to do is create what is called a sense function. So down here in public, I'm creating a new function called sense. In the very first line of code, I'm actually going to steal it from the configure function. This setting the front emitter to high, I'm going to cut it and paste it right here. I'm going to hit control T to get my white space right. And then after I set the emitter to high, I'm going to have it delay for just one millisecond. That gives it enough time to actually fire up, uh, get to full brightness. And then I'm going to store uh, into the front, and I'll give myself some white space here. Uh, I'm going to store into the front combined variable the emitters or the detectors reading. So analog read front detector. And then I am going to turn the LED off. Digital right front emitter low and then I will delay again so that it has enough time to turn off and cool down so it's not emitting any light and then I'm going to set the front ambient value equal to the same thing analog read front detector and then I'm going to calculate my reflected light front reflected equals front combined minus front ambient The next thing I need to do is change my view function so that instead of reading the analog pin, the value of the analog pin, it actually goes and references the front reflected variable. And then the last thing I need to do is in my main function. Before I view my sensors, I actually have to call that sense function. So I'm going to say sensors.sense. Now I'm going to verify and make sure everything's working. Oh, and I forgot to put a void in front of sense. So now that our sensor is filtered, we can see that there are three real benefits. Uh, the first one is that if I turn the ambient light off, it has a very minimal impact on that sensor's reading. The second one is if I remove the wall, there is now a much larger impact on the sensor's reading. And the third is that the sensor does not seem to be affected by changes in its orientation with respect to the ambient light 
as much as it had been prior to this uh, new method of sensing. So we haven't eliminated every last bit of uh, effect that ambient light can have on our robot, but we've improved it substantially. I'll leave it to you to go ahead and add this functionality to your left and right sensors.